Okay, my wonderful, intelligent young friends, these are some of your young peers over in the Royal Institute, which is one of the highest class learning institutions in the world. And they are here to learn about light and so forth. Now, I'm going to make mention, this is, this is outstanding, it was very, very good. And I have a little to add, but I, not much. Very, very well done. Now, let's watch what happens here. A nuclear fusion reactor at a temperature of several millions of degrees in the center, but fortunately somewhat less on the outside. Now, the first thing I want to say is he's wrong completely about the sun, <laughs> the source of the energy from the sun. He says it's a fusion reactor. It is not. It is scrubbing through the atmosphere, which is all of space, has, is loaded with particles. That is what charges the sun. So outside of the source of the sun's energy, which is not fusion, has nothing to do with fusion. It's scrubbing through the atmosphere, and that what gives it that extreme temperature in its corona, and it's low temper, lower, much lower, six thousand degrees on the surface, millions way out in the corona, because that's that's where it's scrubbing through space. I've shown this many times, and if you haven't seen that, those videos you should. Now, and they have no explanation for that. They just breeze over. So let's go forward from here, but don't forget this fusion part totally wrong. But still 6,000 degrees as I have here. At the surface. The sunbeams come 93 million miles to us in eight and a half minutes and arrive at the outside of the atmosphere. You just hang on to that one, Gene, thank you. I'll take away this so it's less confusing arrive at the outside of the atmosphere in their pristine state looking somewhat like that. But by the time they arrive at the surface of the earth they are pretty tattered. They look like that. They've lost perhaps half of their energy and there are holes here in the infrared and I want to ask, that's the real sunbeam which we see and I want to ask why that is. What happens to the poor old sunbeam as it comes uh, towards us? Well, of course, it goes through the atmosphere. I haven't had an atmosphere on here before, and if I did have the atmosphere, you wouldn't see it, really, because it would only be two millimeters thick. So let's blow up a little bit here so that we can see better what we're doing and put the sky, the atmosphere, over the earth. Now, to get him straight, Gene, pull it down a little bit. Right, and now let's put on a sunbeam coming from our sun here. Oh yes, we, we, Gene wants us to have a few clouds. But let's have our sunbeam come. Now I want to make some, just a mention. When he said that the atmosphere itself is only two millimeters thick, that, when you look up into the sky, the, the gases that are clinging to the Earth's surface are only just barely up there. And we think they're very high up, and they are to us, but to the Earth in general, they are not very thick, the atmosphere. So he's going to show the light coming through the atmosphere, but the atmosphere is so way down here, okay? And these are the light waves. And we see them as colors. But there are two sections, way low frequency, which means they very few frequencies and very high frequencies. You don't see them. He's going to explain this. But I want you to see these are not waves. These are literally particles spinning, just like this. That's the particle. You see it? They're coming down. You see it as a wave. You see? That's a wave. That's a wave. The faster it spins, the less, or the more waves there are going to be. So you could have, have a coming down like that, or it could be like this. Dip, 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 dip. Now, I don't know whether they are bigger particles or just spinning faster, 
This I don't know. But I do know that these are not just some flappy wave that's coming down. It makes no sense at all. It's a particle. It looks like a wave. I've shown this in our light experiments also. But let's go continue on with this because otherwise than that, I'm going to make a couple of alterations to what they say, but otherwise that it's pretty close. Coming out of the sun is all of these particles, and they're particles. That's all they are. Coming through a nice clear blue sky, sky because otherwise uh, what I have to say gets, we'll, we'll deal with clouds later. But there we are, that's what we're talking about. <coughs> now, the... What I, I've shown here is the spectrum of all the colors, and I've put the infrared on as well, and the ultraviolet. I didn't know what color to put those, because you can't see them anyway. They're represented by these waves. Here. Now, what I want to ask is why, as it comes through the atmosphere, does the sunbeam get tattered? And there are two reasons for this. Uh, uh, partly the light is scattered, and partly the light is absorbed. And let's talk about let's talk about those in turn. If I really they are the same thing. What is happening here? You see these little dips? Every every certain chunk of matter will it will vibrate according to the pulsation of the light. All right. So, iron might take a certain color in the red and, and absorb that, and it won't bother the blue or the green and so forth. It's, basically, that's what it is. You're, you, that's why you see different metals as different colors. And iron, you see as red. <laughs> that's in your blood. All right. And, um, and, and there's the, you have to start to understand the colors. The green is like your copper and so forth. Sulfur is yellow, and, and, and that's because they absorb that frequency, that particular frequency. So it might be, the yellow might be like, like here, and the red is way down here, and the blue is way up here. You see? That's what it is. The red is way up here. Then you go to the yellow is here, and the green is here, and the blue is here. And then even faster than that is up in here. That's all of this. All right, he's basically going to talk about light that gets absorbed and light that gets scattered. Scattered just means it bounces off and you see it as, as light coming back off. Absorbed means literally it takes it in and it uh, uh, takes that particle in and becomes c part of the the matter that it hit as heat literally now he's going to be he, he i don't know if he realizes it but it's a hundred percent is always going to be radiated light that you're going to see if you see light it's always going to be radiated so um when you see something lit up that is um, radiated light and otherwise otherwise like these infrared and ultraviolet and so forth can be absorbed and heat something up you don't even see the light it's absorbing and taking the electron in so here goes I shine white light on it it's the light is scattered isn't it uh, if I have little white bits of paper, it's scattered. If I have even drops of water, it's scattered. Here I have some drops of water, uh, a boiling kettle, and rather like a cloud, condensed drops of liquid water forming a cloud. Now I should switch the light on, and you can see uh, the scattering of the light, and it's... All right, it's, it's kind of basic from here. He's just showing that light... If, if there's particles, they will glow when light comes through them. Basically, that's it. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's red. Red is from light that is very long frequency like that. So, these can travel without hitting anything, really, a lot longer than blue, which is real light, short like this. And it's spinning so fast that it's going to hit something. And that will absorb it and scatter it. 
Well, the red is coming like this. It's going zip, 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 zip. So it's missing all kinds of stuff. And it, it glows much further. That's why you see a red sunset. And during the day, it's, it's, um, it's blue in the sun or sunlight. Let's see if we can get up to here, because most of it doesn't make much sense until you get up in here. Let's light, see. the blue light, because it's a short, a short wavelength, is scattered better. The, the particles are smaller than the wavelength of light, and the blue light is scattered better than the red light. It interacts more. And it was t Professor Tyndall working here in the Royal... He was the resident professor here in the Royal Institution after Faraday. It was he. You see, Faraday, they're talking about people that are, the, the, these are the top end people that had discovered all this stuff. He who studied uh, scattering and who explained the blue of the sky. And if you explain the blue of the sky, uh, you get a bonus because you explain the red of the setting sun as well. Let me show you a setting sun and some blue sky. This is, uh, this is a tube used by Tyndall here. And we're going to shine a light uh, through the tube. And uh, then, at the moment, you will see the light is going straight through here. OK. And Mr. Smoke, uh, Mr. Smoke is going to, uh, going to Coates. Mr. Coates is going to smoke. He enjoys this experiment. It comes in the middle of the lecture. And he's going to put some smoke in this tube. And I want you to see how the blue scattering occurs, first of all. And just put there, you see the smoke, that's enough, Bill. You see uh, how the blue scattering occurs there, can you see that? It's blue, isn't it? But you see how it gets red as it gets beyond here? And that's because all the blue is scattered. And so there's only red left to scatter. All right, and the reason for that is because the red is so long frequency that as it spins through this light, it's missing all kinds of stuff, but eventually it does it's all that's left, so that the, the red will be down here. The blue is like this. So it's going to hit something here. So the blue starts to show up here right away. And it's gone right away. There's no blue left down here. And he, he explains this. Well, now if we go through a longer atmosphere, as we do when the sun sets, it will become redder and redder. Now watch the sun as we put more and more smoke in. Here's the sun. Now we put smoke in. You see it's quite white at the moment. And we're scattering blue light from the smoke. Now it goes red as it goes through more and more atmosphere. And we get more smoke in still. It gets redder and redder. Until all right, so that's just all he's showing. It's, it, everything's been absorbed. All the blue has been absorbed here because there's so much density of smoke in here now. Normally, in the sunlight, the earth is ro ro you're s like this. So, so you're here, and the light's coming straight down on you. As you go way over here, the light has to go way through all of this um, atmosphere before it can... S that's why you see these red sunlight sunsets as you come way away from... And it has to go way through the atmosphere instead of straight down and hit you. So anyway, that's the way sunlight works. It's a very, very good presentation by this guy. I liked it. Okay, my extremely good friends, I did a video just a little while ago about how light travels and the particles, because they're particles, and they travel through as light, but particles also are electricity. Same thing. This, in my world, is light, all right, which is a back-to-back -back electron. There's a box of them, back-to-back -back electrons, all right. Now, they can be split, and then you have the electron. It's still a bl black and white. All right? Now, that means one of them is extremely powerful, the white part, and the black part has no concussive power. The white part is the one that explodes. But they are particles, which we call electrons. And I've shown this many times, so I hope you know this already. And the electron, of course, orbits at certain distances, exact distances, dictated by how much extra push this has. It will want to suck this electron down with its positiveness, but its excessive negativeness, because they've already collected enough here, will push this away and it will keep it in its orbit. That's the idea of quantum. Now, what we have here, I hope you're going to see that, 
what we have here is all kinds of electronic components. Now, they all operate differently. Capacitors hold charges. Transistors turn on and off cascades of current. Um, uh, diodes only let electricity go one direction. Bridge diodes rectify. They turn uh, oscillating current into just one-way current. Um, you know, you got all your different chips. You got your, you, you know, we'll go over all this stuff. There's Zener diodes, there's driver chips, relays, capacitors, little signal diodes, resistors. That's about it. And we'll look at all this. And of course, that's a coil, and that these change the voltage. We'll go over all this stuff one one at a time. You know, everybody knows what a motor is. Transistors. I did all this stuff. I mean, I, and I trained all a lot of guys. Um, and I liked it. It's, it's, it, it's, it's very enjoyable to, to understand something and then to realize what the heck is going wrong with that thing. Everything looks fine, but there's a problem somewhere. Or if there was, and then maybe there isn't. And in this case, it's good. Right, but you got, you know, it's pretty nice to be able to tell a good one from a bad one because solid state, that's you really can't tell a difference unless you can see something bleeding or it's bubbled or it's. I'll show you all that stuff because I've seen it all. I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to start out by learning all about the meter and how the different, you know voltage, amperage, capacitance, DC versus AC, continuity, which means how much resistance is in that circuit to the flow of the electricity, how the electricity flows, how all these different devices operate within these circuits. And they operate together to create a, st a stable, consistent power, which means voltage primarily, with a certain amount of amperage that will ch change up and down but usually the voltage has to stay regulated and then the amperage will flow depending upon what devices kick in and out so let me get ready and we'll start to go over the basics of electricity all right so if you got friends or kids or any of that stuff or boy scouts all of that stuff you should learn this and i'll help you and if i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong but I, you know, I did it for a long time, so most of the things I'm going to tell you are going to be accurate. All right, stay tuned.